Okay, so the last portion of our uh, second topic, which is theories, data, and graphs in economics, uh, is uh, focus on on uh, data as well as on graphs. How do we read graphs? So let's share with you uh, the PowerPoint uh, regarding the third part of that topic. So. Index number, uh, that's a very commonly we use uh, in economics. Uh, that's a, a number, uh, uh, it's a variable conventionally expressed relative to the base period, base period, which is assigned the value 100. So uh, we can see that the most commonly uh, index number is consumer price index, uh, CPI, uh, which is used to measure the inflation. Uh, there are some indexes for indices for uh, stock markets that reflects their uh, combined activity that what's going on overall in the uh, stock market. So indices is one of the way that how we can uh, use that variable to understand uh, the whole idea. Like consumer price index is telling us the price in general uh, for uh, the trend in the price in general, not very specific item. So that's why the indices are used or index number is used to uh, get an idea of a, uh, the, the idea uh, in, in general uh, about the situation uh, by a single variable. Um, the, so for in order to calculate the index number, we have a base period. And how do we get it, the index number? Absolute value in a given period divided by the base period into 100. So uh, we normally we get the uh, the indices uh, in terms of percentages, uh, which we see that, okay, it's a 9%, 10% from the base period change, the change in the base period. So we see here. Now, uh, in economics, we see the graphs and the graphs are based on the data. Uh, data can be a cross-sectional or it can be a time series data. Cross-sectional data, when we are seeing, uh, means that we are looking at the data uh, or, 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 over uh, different uh, cross sections, uh, same data, same variable, same time period, but over uh, different cross sections. Like for example, you see here, uh, this is a, a dollar price of a housing in, in Canada uh, in different uh, provinces. So it's a, it's a uh, at very particular uh, time period, uh, we get the data of average housing price uh, in different uh, provinces uh, in Canada. So it's a cross-sectional data uh, on a particular time period uh, for a one variable uh, across different cross-sections. Uh, so this is the way that we can represent the cross-sections. Uh, the other one is a time series data. We collect a data of a variable over a period of time. Like it can be a quarterly, it can be a daily. Like if you want to see uh, the uh, the index of uh, stock market, so it's ch daily changing, and we can get it uh, over a period of a week or a two week or a year, month or a year. So that that's a time series. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, these are the two ways that we use uh, in order to uh, to represent our data. And this is the example of uh, uh, the data uh, uh, time series data like a percentage of labor force uh, over a period of time. So it's starting from 1978 uh, till 2020. And we see that this is the, uh, the labor force, uh, percentage of labor force is increasing or decreasing over time. So we can see. Single economic variables such as uh, unemployment, national income, or the average price of a house can and come into two. Uh, basic forms, cross-sectional data and time series. So another way to represent the data uh, is with a scattered diagram, a graph showing two variables, one measured on x-axis and the other one is measuring on y-axis. Uh, each point represents the value of a variable uh, for a particular unit of observation. And we see here uh, uh, how the graph, uh, how we can construct a graph in economics uh, when two variables move together, the variables are positively related. So we get a, a, a curve or a line which is upward sloping. When two variables move in 
and opposite direction, the variables are negatively related. Uh, and we see that uh, the, the graph is a downward sloping. If the graphs of these relationships are straight line and the variables are linearly related to each other, and the function is not graphed as a straight line is a nonlinear function. So these are basic um, uh, characteristics we can see in the graph. Some graphs are linear graphs. If these the graphs are straight lines, uh, some graphs are nonlinear if they are not straight lines. Uh, and we also see that there's a negative or a positive relationship. So this is uh, uh, a graph, uh, graph between two variables. One variable is the uh, remaining pollution, uh, thousands of tons. Uh, and uh, which is represented on y-axis and the expenditure on pollution reduction is represented on x-axis. So the, the relationship is negative between them. Why? Because if we expend more money to reduce pollution, the pollution will reduce. So the slope of the line, uh, how do we calculate the slope of a line here is uh, delta P with a change in pollution uh, divided by change in expenditure delta E uh, expenditure. So between point A and B, it cost $2,000 to reduce pollution by uh, 1,000 tons. So we see here uh, the pollution is reduced by 1,000 ton when we uh, spend $2,000. So we can see that the slope of the line is 1,000 divided by 2,000. So by this way, uh, the slope is 0. 0.5. So the slope is 0. 0.5. Uh, these are nonlinear slope curves. We can see that uh, this is a diminishing marginal uh, response, like uh, the uh, every time the marginal benefit or the marginal, uh, here it is uh, the marginal efficiency of uh, spending money to reduce uh, pollution is reducing. So this is a marginal, uh, uh, diminishing marginal response and increasing marginal cost. Uh, when uh, when we spend more to reduce uh, pollution, uh, that's going to be uh, become more expensive. So this upward sloping uh, curve is a nonlinear curve because it's not a straight line, and this is also a downward sloping nonlinear curve. But the point is that how we can calculate the slope. So in a uh, in a curves uh, graphs, uh, the the slopes are not constant. The slopes are changing. And we can find only uh, find only the slope on that particular point on that particular spot. How do we do that? By drawing a straight line tangent to that point. Uh, the slope of that straight line is the slope of that curved line on that particular point, which is tangent to each other. So that's the way that we can calculate the slope of a nonlinear function. Uh, <clears throat> The, some graphs have a minimum or a maximum, uh, a function where it is uh, after that it starts decreasing straight line tangent to the curve at point A. So sometimes we have to look at uh, the output, like when we start uh, profit per year, uh, the profit is increasing when the output is increasing. But after a certain point, uh, if we further produce more, the profit starts decreasing. And that's a, a very commonly observed uh, observation because the production level up to certain level it is productive but after that the productivity go down and the uh, wastage and all these resources uh, the, the other point is here is a function with a minimum so straight line tangent to the curve at point a after that what is going to happen that the the cost is uh, decreasing uh, or speed uh, kilometers per hour is decreasing uh, liters of gasoline so when we are speeding up till 100 or 90 our uh, consumption per uh, per kilometer of the gas is decreasing but after that if we want to increase further accelerate our car or vehicle what is going to happen the consumption per uh, per kilometer is going to increase the car is burning more fuel in order to get uh, that speed level after that so that's the way uh, these minimum and maximum we, we will use these concepts when we discuss the cost uh, or the uh, profit or the production uh, chapters more uh, effectively uh, there. So uh, this is all what we want to talk about the, uh, the uh, theories, data and graphs uh, in economics. Uh, in our next video, we're going to talk about uh, the bread and butter of economics, which we call it as a 
supply and demand. So thank you very much. And if you have any comment, please do write it uh, below.